My wonderful assistant friend needed some more kale, so I thought, why don't we transform the backyard into an awesome aquaponics pond for us to all enjoy. Started by cutting some 4x4s with a skill saw, which I regretted immediately, and we used those to prop up the pond, making it a little bit easier to change the water. If it's on the ground, it's gonna be pretty tough. We had to make sure this was level, I just threw in some pieces of wood in the back, double checked everything, and then we started with the substrate. So we already have some sand in this, this is a pond that we set up a few years ago and it's just been chilling. But I didn't wanna stare at this stainless steel tub, so we started by making a frame that we could then put some really nice boards on. We made some 45 degree cuts to make everything look a little bit more pretty, and then we eventually used some red cedar fence posts. But before before we could finish, the fish that we were originally gonna put in this thing showed up. I was hoping to have this pond done by now, but we're gonna have to kick it into overdrive because the fish just showed up. This time our fish are from Aqua Who, Aqua Huna. Never bought from these guys before, but they also have a really good reputation, so hoping for the best here. I'm excited to see what we have here, so. Here are the fish. Looks like we have a couple bags here. These are my 12 Madaka rice fish. They're the super white ones. We should be able to see them really easily from the top of the water. I know it's impossible to see these guys right now, but let's go ahead and let's start getting them acclimated. I gotta figure out where we're gonna put them because we obviously don't have the pond done quite yet. The more I learn about these fish online, the more they just seem like they're mini koi fish. I mean, there's a huge community around rice fish and just all the different color variations and how perfect they are for keeping outside. I just really wanted to get into these fish. I'm gonna start doing some breeding with these specifically. We're gonna start with these. We're gonna get some other color variants too. That's all in the plan for me and I'm just really excited to start. I know it's not pretty, but this is where our rice fish are gonna acclimate, guys. We're probably gonna have to put them in this aquarium for a few days, at least, until we finish the pond. I did a little check on our water parameters, and we're actually closer to a pH of seven, so we're definitely not gonna have to worry about doing that drip acclimation. We can just open the bags and put them in once we get them temperature acclimated. We, of course, have another bag to put in here, but I just wanted to zoom in and show these guys Bagged fish are not gonna be as colorful, obviously, as they will be eventually. Again, super white fish. They kind of look like mini koi fish, and they behave like them, again, because they're so cold tolerant and they're perfect for outdoor keeping and breeding. These fish are gonna look so good in the pond setting. Look at that visibility from the top, man. That is perfect. I'm excited to finish the pond. We gotta go do that right now. We gotta go finish it. I can't wait to start breeding these fish, guys. I want a million of them. So after making only a handful of incorrect cuts and having to go back and forth to Lowe's like three or four extra times, we're finally staining the boards that are gonna make the cut here. Using just a stain that I liked, this is gonna help to waterproof the thing and then also make it stand out a little bit better against the fence. Then we go ahead and use my fancy new brad nailer that I'll use probably one other time in my entire life to attach these boards to that frame that we made. And I should say, this is something that will lift completely up off of the pond. There's no backing to it. So we have a little bit of leeway there, which is kind of nice. After staring at this thing for about a day, I realized that we should probably put some 45 boards up on top of this to cover those original screws from the frame and just to give it a more of a complete look. All right, and don't make fun of me. I had to use the skill saw to make these 45s and it was tough, okay? I don't have a lot of skill with the skill saw. We moved some of my big grasses that I've had for a number of years over to the sides. I think it looked pretty good. Now we get to add some more substrate. So we have some more of that Monterey beach sand that we're gonna add to it. Just get in there, wash it out really good until the water coming out is clear, then you know you're ready to add it. We just spread this stuff out, get it in the pond. We added a little bit of depth with this, but not a ton. So now we're gonna be using the paver trick to help boost some of our plants up. And we got some pretty cool plants, just what was available at the nursery center. I don't know the names of all of these plants. The tags are in them, but I am just really bad at remembering what these are. I know we have some papyrus and we have a couple of sword plants actually. That's what this one is. We just started messing around, putting the plants in until we get kind of a look that we think we like. Taller plants in the back, smaller, shorter grasses in the front, and that's pretty much all there is to it. At this point, we have most of the plants in place, but it's kind of hard to tell like what height you want them to be at without water being in the pond. So we just go ahead and fill it up 
straight, you know, just from the hose. We're gonna, of course, treat this like it's a normal aquarium. We're gonna dechlorinate it with Fritz Pond Guard. That's gonna get rid of the chlorine and chloramine that you might have in your water. If you're gonna be adding fish right away, then you're gonna also wanna definitely throw in some beneficial bacteria. It's gonna help out a lot. Plants are, of course, gonna do most of the heavy lifting as far as nitrogen goes. Like, pond plants do a phenomenal job at extracting that from the water column, but it's just always good to have that reassurance. I also decided to throw in a little bit of driftwood that I had in the backyard for way too long. This is just some spider wood. So with the water in, we can mess around with some of the plants a little bit more. I almost forgot about the water hyacinth that we're gonna add. You have to add this stuff if you're making a pond of this size. It's a great little micro environment for the fish. Pretty much acts like a little breeding mop if you have fish that are gonna be laying some eggs. And it's also a great nitrogen extractor. We're almost done with the pond here. We still have to do the filter and stuff that's coming up in just a sec, but during this whole process, I had a little bit of an epiphany and I decided that instead of dedicating this whole thing to rice fish, that, that seemed a little silly to me. So I went and picked out some lovely Comet goldfish from the local nursery and we're gonna add these fish to this pond. We're gonna save the rice fish that we unboxed in this video for the smaller dedicated ponds where we can keep the specific variants together for breeding purposes. And it would just be tough to dedicate like just this pond to those platinum rice fish. So I think this is probably the move. These fish have been sitting in here for a while. They probably have a bunch of diseases. We wanna keep them like together and separate from everything, but we got them. They're temperature acclimated already. Let's add them in. These Comet Goldfish are tiny. They cost like 50 cents each, but don't let that fool you. These things can get up to like a foot long, you know, if they're in the right size of environment. It'll probably take them a few seasons to get big enough to warrant needing a new home, but we already have that figured out, okay? So don't worry. Now we get to finally construct our aquaponics filter. So here's the deal. We went back and forth on this. This is like an old little planter that's meant to sit on the edge of a deck. So I thought, hey, perfect. We'll just, you know, spray paint it with some textured brown spray paint. It'll match in, it'll look good. So that's what I'm doing here. We covered the whole thing and then we had to drill in some holes that would be the outspout. So tape that up so we wouldn't make any cracks, drilled out a bunch of holes. But once I got this thing completely finished, I realized a few things. One, that textured spray paint kind of like flakes off no matter what. And then also I drilled way too many holes in this thing. So it was impossible to keep any amount of water in this thing. And I figured we probably wanted a little bit more for what we were trying to do. So I eventually scrapped this whole thing completely, started over with a slightly different planter that I actually like the look of better. It's more rectangular. We drilled fewer holes in it. We also used a flat version of the spray paint, which is totally aquarium safe. Forgot that we needed to drill one more hole in this for the output of the pump, which is the input of the filter. So for this, we're gonna be using one of my favorite pumps, the Eco Plus. I think this is a 1 five. We're going to use a clear poly tubing as the input for the filter. We just drilled out a bunch of holes in that kind of make a like a rain effect in the aquaponics media that we're going to eventually put in this. We set this thing in place and then we get those clay pebbles, fill this thing up with a whole bag of it, feed in our tubing, which has the end plugged. Probably should have said that before. And then we kicked it on. So, so initially this thing was super full with water. We needed to add in a few more drain spouts to kind of match the input of the filter. And then once that was done, we were ready to add in our kale. We also put a zucchini in this, which is gonna go crazy. Maybe we'll put like a trellis behind this whole thing. I don't know, but never done this before. I'm not sure if this is too much water. This is very much an experiment. Hopefully the kale grows and friend doesn't get mad at me, but here it is. This is what it looks like. It's a little loud but we're working on silencing that and changing a few things. I'm excited to see if it even works. Uh, if you're an aquaponics person, let me know how bad I messed this up. I apologize for throwing you for a little bit of a loop there with not putting these rice fish in that pond that we just set up, but I wanted to show you something really cool that happened. I hope you're gonna be able to see it, but we already have some eggs on the breeding mops, and I've literally only had these fish in the tank for probably five or six days tops. So I am super stoked on this. I don't know how many eggs are exactly in this thing. There was less here this morning. So I'm checking here later in the day. I need to do something with them. Probably should pull them out here pretty quick. And so the main reason for not wanting to put them in that pond is because we're not gonna be able to take care of those eggs and get them out and separate them and make sure that we have the highest yields possible. They'd be trying to lay eggs all over that place and it would just be impossible to keep track of. So we're gonna have to figure out something to where we can create something similar to this and then really take advantage of those eggs because we need the fish. You know, removing the eggs and, and how you care for them after that. Because again, I am pretty new to this. But just super stoked on that. I can't wait to get the other ones breeding. And we actually got some more rice fish in the mail. I'm trying to work it into a different video. I have, I'm working on like seven videos at the same time, guys, here. 
So thanks for bearing with me in my craziness. Excuse me, you're making a bunch of noise over here, dude. What are you doing? Hello, friend. You know I'm growing some kale for you in the pond outside, right? You could literally care less right now. So that's the fancy pond build, or at least my take on it. We took a pretty bland, boring stainless steel tub. We turned it into something that I think looks pretty cool. Of course, with something like this, the sky's the limit. Your creativity could go crazy with this. You could do a lot more than just what I did, but hopefully this started you off on the right path. Like I said, I'm working on a bunch of different videos kind of all at the same time right now. I'm a little fried, but we're getting there. So, so the next video, I'm not sure exactly what it's going to be, but I think you'll find it at least a little bit entertaining. Thanks again for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next one.